Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Solving Rational Expressions. Before we get into that though, I want to review adding and subtracting. So what I would recommend, since this is a review question, is pause the video and try the question yourself and then come back and see if you've done it correctly. So in this question, Amber has simplified a rational expression. She has shown five steps to her solution, but she's made a mistake. That's not the correct answer. So we want to find where she made her first mistake. Okay, so step number one is just the question, but let's check if she did her uh, non-permissible values restrictions correctly. So the opposite of a plus one is a minus one. The opposite of a minus one is a plus one, and I already have that one. So step one looks good. Step number two, she's doing a common denominator. So let's see if she chose the right one. So I need a factor of x plus one and x minus one. I need a factor of x plus one, got it, and then the x minus one from before. So the denominator looks good. Let's see if she made the equivalent fractions correctly. So the first one stays the same. In the second one, I'm missing a factor of x minus one. So to be fair, I'm also going to multiply the top by x minus one, and it looks like she did that. So step two looks good. Let's look at step number three. In step number three, it looks like she applied the distributive property for her binomials. Let's see if she did that correctly. So 2x squared, negative 2x and x, negative x, yes. One times negative one, negative one. The first fraction stays the same. Step three looks good. So step number four is where she subtracts. I'm always suspicious when you're subtracting. So let's see if she did this correctly. So x minus two stays the same, good. I'm going to subtract two x squared and then subtract negative x. Ah, and it looks like Amber forgot that. She made the Homer mistake in our last video. She forgot to subtract the entire numerator. So this should be actually positive, and when you subtract a negative one, that should also be a positive. So step number four is not correct. That's where she made her first mistake. Now, let me show you how to do this on the graphing calculator. On the graphing calculator, I'm going to put step one in Y1, because that's my original, and I'm going to compare it to all the other steps. But I'm going to start from the bottom and go up. So I'm going to check on my calculator to see if this is right or wrong. So if this is correct, and this is correct, and this is correct, then maybe that's not correct, then step two would be where I made the mistake. But we're going to go through and try that to see where she made her first mistake. So looking at this, so in Y1 is the original question, and in Y2 is step number five. So that's the step right here. So we go into the table and y1 equals y2, so that means step five is correct. So I can go back over here and let's pretend we're doing this on our graphing calculator. So I know this is correct. Now let's go into step four. So original in y1, step four is in y2. And if you go in your table, y1 is not equal to y2. So I know step four is incorrect. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that's the first place she made the mistake because step three could also be wrong. So let's look at step three. So here I have original in Y1, step three is in Y2, go into the table and Y1 equals Y2. So that means step three is correct. So if I go back over here, I know step three is correct. Therefore, step four is where she made her first mistake. So let's go over here and look at my tip, just writing that out. So since step three was correct, step four and five were incorrect, the mistake must be in step four because that's the first time it was incorrect. So just a little tip when you guys are doing error analysis questions. So let's look at solving rational equations. Remember what we've done in 6, 1, 6, 2, and 6, 3. We add, subtract, multiply, and divide rational expressions. They had no equal sign. Well, in this section, we're going to solve a rational equation, and it's going to have an equal sign. So we've done solving before with other functions. I just want to refresh your memory that solving an equation really means finding the x-intercepts, the solutions, the roots. It's just the values of x that make the function equal to 0. So remember... You simplify an expression, but you solve an equation. So here's the steps to solving an equation. We're going to factor the denominator, only the denominator, and find the lowest common multiple. 
So it's kind of like setting it up for adding and subtracting. Remember from adding and subtracting, the lowest common multiple is one of each factor to the highest exponent. Once we're done that, we're going to state our restrictions or our non-permissible values, and then multiply every term, even the lonely numbers, by the lowest common multiple. After this step, we should have no more fractions. We're going to be left with either a linear or a quadratic equation. If you end up with something that has exponents of 3 and 4, that means you didn't find the lowest common multiple. So I would go back and try that again. If you end up with a linear equation, I want you to get the variable on one side, the number on the other. If you end up with a quadratic equation, that's when your variable has an exponent of 2. I want everything on one side, 0 on the other. And remember, my most favorite step is the check. Always check to see if you're right in the original equation and also against your restrictions. So let's try a question. This question here, I only have one denominator. So the lowest common multiple of a minus 3, and remember I can always put that as a fraction over 1. The lowest common multiple between those two is a minus 3. So if the lowest common multiple is a minus 3, I only have one restriction because I only have one factor. You can't divide by 0, so a minus 3 can't be 0, which means a can't be 3. So I'm going to multiply every single term by the lowest common multiple. So I do that because here, when I multiply and divide, those are inverse operations that undo each other. And over here, I have a minus 3 times 4, so applying the distributive property for a minus 12. So I end up with a linear equation. Remember, linear equation, I want variable on one side, number on the other. And then I just isolate. So I get that a is equal to 14 over 4, but let's put that fraction in lowest term. It has a common factor of 2, so my answer would be 7 halves. So I'm going to check that in my calculator. I'm going to put the left side of my equation in y1, the right side in y2, and the check always happens in the table, but I'm going to start my table at the solution. So I go into table start, which again is second window, table start, second window. I started at 7 over 2, and you can see in the table y1 equals y2, so I know I'm correct. Let's try another one. So in this one here, I'm going to have to factor the denominator first. So x plus 5 can't be factored, 2 can't be factored, but 2x plus 10 can be factored, and I'm going to factor that, taking out a GCF of 2 times x plus 5. So let's look at the lowest common multiple first. So lowest common multiple is one of each factor. So I need an x plus 5. I need a 2. I need a 2. Got it. And I need an x plus 5. Got it. So I'm just going to write that so that my number is first. So I'm going to write my lowest common multiple as 2 times x plus 5. So I have one factor that is the lowest common multiple. So that means I have one restriction. So divide both sides by 2 and you get x plus 5 can't be 0. Subtract 5 from both sides and you get x can't be negative 5. So now that I know my lowest common multiple, I'm going to multiply every single term by the lowest common multiple. So I know it's a little tedious to write it out, but I really recommend doing that so you don't make any silly mistakes. So I've written it out, I've multiplied every single term by the lowest common multiple, and now I'm going to look for things to cancel. So multiplying and dividing by x plus 5 undo each other. Multiplying and dividing by 2 undoes each other. And here we get to do both. So after this step, I should have no more fractions, and I can see I don't have any more fractions, so I'm on the right track. So what I'm left with is 2 times 2x plus 3. So distributive property plus x plus 5 times 1 equals just 7. So it looks like I have another linear equation. 4x and x is 5x. 6 and 5 is 11. And then I will subtract 11 from both sides. 5x is equal to negative 4. 
and divide both sides by 5, and I get a solution of negative 4 over 5. Now, looking at my restriction, it's not one of those, so it looks like it might be a potentially good solution. But I always check in the graphing calculator just to be absolutely sure. So left side in Y1, right side in Y2, start your table, again, that second window, at negative 4 divided by 5. You can see in the table, Y1 equals Y2, so that means I did it correctly. Let's try another one. So in this one here, I have a trinomial to factor. So let's look at the denominator here, and I'm going to factor. So however you like to factor, I know it factors as x minus 3 and x plus 2. I always like to pause and just do a quick little check to see if it's correct. Okay, let's find our lowest common multiple. So lowest common multiple, I'm going to need one of each factor. So I'm going to need an x plus 2, an x minus 3, an x minus 3, got it, an x plus 2, got it. So I have two factors in my lowest common multiple, which means for my restrictions, I have double trouble. Two restrictions. So x minus 3 can't be 0, which means x can't be 3 x plus 2 can't be 0, which means x can't be negative 2. So there's my two restrictions. I'm now going to multiply every single term by the lowest common multiple. So you can see I multiply every single one. Again, I know it's a bit of a pain in the butt to write it out, but less chance of making a mistake. So multiply and divide undoes each other. Multiply and divide undoes each other. And this one undoes both. So I can see I have no denominator. So it looks like I'm on the right track. So distributive property. Ah, I have a subtraction. We need to be super careful with subtraction. We don't want to make a Homer mistake. So I'm going to distribute 5 inside the brackets. And remember, I'm subtracting. So 5 times x is 5x, but I'm subtracting it. 5 times 2 is 10, but I'm subtracting it. Equals negative 25. So if you did this incorrectly, you're going to catch it in the check and always go back to the subtraction part because I find that's the greatest chance of error. So for here, I now have a quadratic. 3x squared minus 14x minus 10 equals negative 25. Remember for quadratics, I want to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And there we go. So I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to 45 and add to negative 14 to be able to factor this. So I think this is a good opportunity for me to review the box method with you. So let's go ahead and do that because I know a lot of you use that method to factor. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 45 add to negative 14. So since it multiplies to a positive and adds to a negative, I know that all my factors are negative. And I know that 9 and 5 multiply to 45, and 9 plus 5 adds to 14. So that must be my factors. So looking at my grid here, I have 3x squared and 15. Oh, I was going to put an x there. There we go, 15. Remember, it's the last term, not the 45. It's the last term of the original quadratic. And then I take my factors in any order. So GCF here, 3x. GCF here, 5. But the leading coefficient is negative, so it's 3x minus 5. GCF here is x. GCF here is 3, but the leading coefficient is negative. I always like to do a quick check. x times 3x, 3x squared. Negative 3 times 3x, negative 9x. x times negative 5, negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 5, 15. Okay, looks like I've done that correctly. So now from my grid, I know what my factors are. So to solve, I set each factor equal to 0, and then I solve. So here I will add 5, divide by 3. Here I will add 3. So those are my potential solutions. Let me just make it bigger so we can see the whole question. First place I check it is against my restrictions. And I notice x cannot equal to 3. So this is not a solution. And I hope you remember that fancy word. This is extraneous. 
Now, what extraneous means is it's the solution to the quadratic, but not a solution to the original equation. So it looks like I only have one solution of 5 thirds. But to be sure that's my solution, I'm going to go into my graphing calculator. So let's just bring this to the front here. And let's look at the check. So I look at the check by putting the left side in Y1, the right side in Y2, and I start my table at 5 thirds, and you can see it is equal. Just in case you didn't catch the 3, I also showed you the check for 3. And notice you have an error for both. Even if you just had an error for 1, you can see it is not the solution. So one last thing I want to ask you before I end this video. If I can do this to get rid of my fractions, and then I have no more fractions, so I have 3x plus 4x equals 60. If I can do that, can I do this? Tempting to do that but I can't do that. What I have done right now is I have made this expression six times bigger. So think of any number. For example, if I had the number two, I can't just make it six times bigger and say, oh, it's 12 now, it's not the same thing. So I can't do that for expressions. I can only do that for equations because there's fairness. It's all about fairness in math. If I do it to one side, I can do it to the other. But in an expression, there is no other side. So I want you to remember equations have balance. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So that's why I multiply every term by the lowest common multiple, because it doesn't change the question. Expressions don't have another side, so you can't multiply by a number. It changes the question. So keep that in mind now that you've learned a different method to solve equations. When it comes to complex equations, instead of solving them, wouldn't it be more efficient just to find who's complicating these equations and just ask them to stop? Well, that wouldn't be me. I want you to continue solving. I want you to do practice question number one, and then you can go on to do the textbook questions. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one, which is word problems.